<laughs> so good morning. Uh, today we are going to talk about carbon. And um, so I guess the first question is why is carbon an important ecosystem services? So I'll be asking some questions. Eh? So be nice and one makes the effort to answer one of them. Eh? Otherwise we'll never get to lunch. So why is carbon so important? We didn't get enough coffee this morning. Eh? <laughs> I guess it's used in the process of photosynthesis. Uh-huh. What else? Frankly? Yes, and we know that uh, a major part of living organisms is made by carbon. Mm -hmm. And I think an important point as well is that carbon is also in the atmosphere. Yes. So CO2 is a greenhouse gas and therefore it affects the amount that we have in the atmosphere has a big implication in the temperature of our globe. So that's why there's all these big things talking about carbon. And I want to show you this figure and it's, um, it shows the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere for the past 400,000 years. And I think we really can see that in the last few years, it's much higher than it's ever been before in our planet. And that's why we are so worried about climate change, because it's unprecedented, the amount of CO2 that we have in the atmosphere that has this greenhouse effect. And just a quick question, how do we know the amount of CO2 that was there before, if we didn't have machines to measure it? Any ideas? I think it's really cool. We know it from the ice. So they take these cores, they take samples from the ice in places like the Antarctica, and they're very, very deep, they're very, very old, and they can know how much CO2 was before in the atmosphere from the little uh, bubbles of air that's trapped in the ice. So that's how we know that in the past 400,000 years, there was much less CO2 in the atmosphere. And that's why we are so worried about carbon, because we have a lot out there, and this is actually bad news for us. So, because of the carbon that we have in the atmosphere and other greenhouse gases, the planet has been getting warmer, and that's why we all talk about climate change. And on average, it's about seven, uh, so, sorry, 0 0.75 degrees warmer than it was in uh, 1860. Of course, there's not the same all over, and that things matter. So if you live in continental Russia, it has warmed a lot more than if you live in Chile near the ocean. So the warmer on average is 0 0.75, but the places that are, have been getting warmer than other places. And this is based on historical records, so this is actually measured. And unfortunately, for some parts of the world, like where we are, they have, we don't have historical data that far. So we don't know if it's maybe just 0 0.2 degrees warmer, or maybe we are more than 2 degrees. But the idea is that the planet has been getting warmer, but not the same everywhere. Don't worry, you'll get a copy of the slides as well. Eh? Just. So the question is, why the tropical forests are so important for carbon? So another volunteer to answer. Some of you work in tropical forests, eh? yeah, frankly? Yeah, I think that uh, tropical rainforest due to its power to power of carbon sequestration uh -huh. and this may help to reduce the amount of uh, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. atmosphere. Exactly, very good answer. So only 10% of the earth land is tropical forest, but they have about 40 to 50% of the carbon that is in our planet in the land, in the biosphere. So you see, although they're small, they have a lot of carbon. And not only they have a lot stored in the trees, in the roots, in the soil, they also clean a lot, you know, through the process of photosynthesis because they are very productive systems. Eh? You know, this is not like the forest that we have in Northern Europe, that during the winter they cannot grow, it's too cold. They shed the leaves or they even stop growing at all. You know, tropical forests continue growing the whole year. So they actually circulate uh, large quantities of carbon. Of course, they're very important for biodiversity. They have a lot of species. The real point here is that small changes on the amount of rainforest that we have 
has a huge effect on the amount of CO2 that we have in the atmosphere and therefore on the rate, how fast climate is changing and how much it is changing. So that's the magnitude and the rate of climate change. So where are the tropical forests? Uh, obviously we have the Congo Basin, West Africa, Madagascar, a few in East Africa. Sorry for the Tanzania guys, they have very little there, really. <laughs> we have the Amazon and we have Central America. There's a little spot there in Puerto Rico where Ben has worked. We have in Southeast Asia. And I want you to look at this uh, picture because we'll go back to this. This is the rainfall of a tropical forest. And you can see that it's not the same. Some parts, especially in the Congo, they're much drier than those of the parts of the Amazon, especially much drier than those in Southeast Asia. So although everything is tropical forest, the way the environment where they live is a little bit different and we'll get back to that a little bit later. So this is where the tropical forests are and just to give a figure, eh, to have an idea how things really work. So we throw about 7.7 petagrams of carbon every year to the atmosphere because of fossil fuel combustion. This could be like industry, cars, transport, we throw about 1.1 petagrams because of land use change, so deforestation, agriculture conversion, things like that. But actually, if we add these 7.7 .7 and 1.1, I guess now you can do very good addition after the class of Amelie yesterday, yeah? Yes. This is 8.8, .8, but actually only 4.1 stay in the atmosphere. So where do the rest go? So some go to the ocean. The oceans are very big in our planet. But some is sequestered by the biosphere, and that's where most of this is actually the tropical forest. So that's why the tropical forests are so important, because they keep storing a lot of the CO2 that we're throwing out there. So they're actually helping us reduce the rate of climate change. And just as an idea, because me, when I see this petagram, I wonder what the hell is a petagram? So actually it's 10 uh, at uh, exponential 15 grams. So 1 billion metric tons of CO2, eh? so this is big numbers eh? that we are talking about. So how can we reduce the amount of CO2 and other uh, greenhouse gases that we're throwing out there? Any ideas? What can we do? Reduce emissions. We can reduce emissions, like doing what? Maybe electric cars? Having Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, let's just say electric cars, solar panels. So, mm -hmm. Renewable energies. Yes. What else can we do? Changing conversion of land uses. Uh huh. What else can we do? Yeah. Growing we can grow, restore forests, maybe. What else? Uh huh. Avoiding deforestation. And that's part of what I want to say. We all talk about it. So, to help reduce how much we throw out there, it's very important to help reduce how much we are clearing this tropical rainforest. And now is another question, and this is very tricky. Do we know how much is the emission coming from deforestation? Any ideas? It's greater maybe than transport? And any ideas on what is the size of land that is cleared of tropical forests every year? You can guess. 10%? 5%? One percent? Yeah? I think capture the emissions of the most, so this probably could be um, 7%? It's low, yeah. I know only maybe in the Congo, agriculture may contribute around 6%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how much land is clear every year from deforestation, on average? Five times Rwanda. Every year it's clear because of deforestation, which is about the size of England. That's how much every year we clear of tropical forests and other woodlands and big forests. So it's about 20% of the world's emission comes from deforestation, not seven, 20. This is about one fourth. And it's more than the whole transportation sector. So it's more than all cars, all trucks, all airplanes, all trains in the world comes from deforestation. And it's about, it's more than US or China, not both combined, eh, because they're <laughs> actually meeting a lot, but it's more than just US or just China. So the numbers are big, and that's why 
we talk about carbon so much. And I just wanted to put this figure briefly because yesterday we discussed with somebody about it. So I think it's interesting to think about it. So this is, would be the zero. So if the bar is going up, the, the, um, sorry, the region is gaining forest. So we can see that in Asia that's been a shift. Before they were in, on overall, eh? this is not just country specific. So before year 2000, they were losing forest and now they're gaining them. In Europe, we are also gaining them. Also a lot of agriculture and abandonment. People are less interested in farming. So some of these farming land is becoming slowly woodlands and forests. And you can see that South America and Africa, that's where things are really bad eh, for deforestation. And the issue is that uh, deforestation mainly comes from the poorest countries. So about 60% comes from the least developed countries. And that's why we had this idea to talk about red. So red starts stands for reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation. That's why it's like the red color, but there's two Ds. Eh? And it's a, a, a strategy that was invented by the United Nations to help reduce the rate of climate change and the magnitude. So focusing on these very poor countries that they don't maybe have ways to manage their forests wisely or maybe they're just getting deforested for different reasons. So we try to help these countries maintain the rainforest so we can actually reduce the rate of climate change. And I think if you want to learn more about it, it's, I just put the website there for you guys. And I, I like to always talk about the history of red because in the beginning it was actually only one D, just like the red color. Before, we were just talking about avoiding deforestation but you know deforestation as what you imagine like this image from the sky where everything is green and suddenly becomes brown because we cut everything. And actually this happens in some parts of the world like Brazil where huge parts of land are cleared for maybe ranching so it becomes brown. But actually in many places in Africa for example the problem is not really just deforestation, it's forest degradation. So maybe through selecting loving we are cutting the biggest trees, the ones that have the more carbon. So if we take a, a picture from the sky, like maybe uh, using a remote sensing, some of these satellite images, it would still look green, but the carbon there would be much lower. So that's why they decided to add the extra D in the naming. Eh? And then there was this issue that started happening, as uh, it was mentioned yesterday as well, that in some part of the world, maybe we are not meant to have a forest. Maybe it's meant to be a savanna. So there were some areas where people start getting like, oh, we can clear the few trees that we have, we'll plant a forest. But maybe this is not good, might be good for carbon, but it might not be good for biodiversity or for ecosystem services, for like watershed management, because we are changing the system. Mm -hmm. So that's why they added the plus. So you can only uh, get money in these least developed countries and poor countries if you actually is about natural forest. Eh? You cannot clear your savanna to plant eucalyptus and get money for it. Eh? You know, this is not about red. And then there was another plus added, the red plus plus, or also called realu, because and this happened especially related to an issue in Southeast Asia where there are huge patches of land of a peatland so actually some of these peatlands had very few trees so it didn't seem like they had a lot of carbon but they had a lot of carbon in the soil so this land was cleared for farming palm oil and by clearing this land drying these swamps and uh, burning them they were releasing a lot of co2 and other greenhouse gases in the atmosphere so then they thought okay maybe we should also address so it's not just about forests Deforestation, degradation and natural forests is also about other land uses that we need to consider because they have a huge effect when we modify them for climate change. So what is the potential of red? So it's been estimated that if we could implement this red, so trying to help these poor countries better manage their forests and their other land uses that are rich in carbon, we could help reduce 0.35 degrees on average, the global warming. Of course, if you live near the sea where you, you don't, it's not predicted to have a lot of warming, it doesn't seem like a lot, but in some other parts of the world where the warming is predicted to be higher, it might be higher than this. So just by helping protect these forests in the poorest countries and these maybe peatlands, we can help reduce global climate change by 0.35 degrees. 
So I want to show you something uh, just to have an idea of how is um, deforestation. Eh? So we are going to Brazil and this is deforestation in year 2006 and um, this is the uh, orangey colors eh? and I want to show you somewhere around here Rondonia. So this was the kind of middle of nowhere eh? back in 1975 wow. and if you're careful about this image you can see there's a small logging path here there's a small trail that goes down that was set by a logging company. That was 1975. That was 1986. So what had happened? The logging had become bigger. People start to settle around the areas and they start cultivating. And there were other logging trails around it that start expanding. So from 75, 86, eh? that's 11 years. That was 92. So the place start developing, eh? more people coming, more farming, maybe more facilities. I don't know, it seems that this little town is growing as well. I mean, this is something you can do now, guys, with your skills you learn in GIS. Eh? It's not so difficult. And that was in 2001. <laughs> this had become like a whole town. Mostly agriculture, barely any forest less. So it's just to think about the effects that this have when we talk about deforestation. Eh? Imagine how much um, CO2 and other greenhouse gases have just gone to the atmosphere because of this changing in the process. So, historically, um, this is the deforestation rates, uh, uh, sorry, yeah, the kilometer, square kilometers uh, deforested in the Amazon, in the Brazilian Amazon, and we can see that between 88 and 2017, sorry, 2007, sorry, yeah, so no, okay, I didn't change it, sorry. Um, they managed to reduce the rate of deforestation 